doing today. I have a lot of stuff going on here. So this is a clipboard that I uh, did. It's a collage and it's a clipboard that I did um, when I was at um, Royce's retreat uh, a little over a month ago. <laughs> Yippee! And it's decoupaged on both sides. And it was a really fun thing to do. Honestly, as simple as the clipboard this, you know, as this is, um, it, I just, I don't know, I'm really drawn to it. I really like how it turned out. And, you know, there's layers upon layers on here. And so I originally pulled out the same decoupage tissue that I used on that and was going to do a bigger clipboard. And you guys can get these clipboards. We're gonna use the normal size one because I use a lot of clipboards. I have orders on them and back orders on them and all kinds of stuff on them. Um, but you can get those clipboards at the Dollar Tree. They used to be a dollar. Now, you know, they are, I think I heard on Royce's live the other night, they're uh, five quarters now. <laughs> so, uh, and I stopped at the Dollar, I already had clipboards, but I stopped at the Dollar Tree earlier today. And so I might still use this. You guys let me know what you think. Uh, one of the reasons why I was kind of changing my mind about using this one is, A, I already have one with this paper on it, but I also created a really cool tree stencil. So let me see. I'm going to put the camera down and you guys can see the stencil better on this table. Let's see, do I have it in the right place? Yeah. So I really like the spooky looking old wintry tree. And it doesn't really have to be spooky now that I say that because if you did like a snow scene or a Christmas scene underneath it, it would just be, you know, a typical tree in Chicago. So, um, but I love this stencil, and if it's a reusable stencil. I know you guys see me do uh, a lot of the adhesive stencils, but this one's reusable, and it is up on my website if you're interested. Um, but one of, one of the reasons I made it is I really wanted to have a tree, and not the whole tree. I'm just going to do, like, I know that's hard for you to see, Let's see if I put paper behind it. Does that make it easier? A little bit. On the clipboard, I only want half of the tree on there. So you're getting a portion of the trunk and the root and a portion of the tree. So then I was kind of like going through my stash of paper I have a lot of paper. I could wallpaper entire rooms of my house with the, the amount of paper I have. And I thought this one was a really pretty one. And um, so I'm thinking I will use this portion here for sure. And then still use my stencil on top of it and stencil that on. And I really like the butterflies on this one. And so I might take a couple of the butterflies from here and put on. So let's just see what happens, you guys. Let's just start from there. And you know, I did both sides of the other one. I did both sides. And so I am I think I'll do both sides on this. Why not? There's no reason not to. 
Okay, so the first thing I need to decide is, because this is bigger than what I need, and do I want this really cool emblem up here or these really cool emblems down here? I think I'll take these down here. So how are, how is everybody? Are you guys all doing well? Okay, so I'm just gonna mark, mark it with my hands so I know where to cut it. I'm just putting a crease in it. If you guys are just joining, say hello. I have... Um, a freebie giveaway to talk to you guys about, but I wanna wait till we have more people on to talk about it. So, scissors. I also jumped ahead, you guys, and I uh, put one coat of drop cloth on here. It just needs to be a light color. Um, you could use fluff, you could use cotton, um, you could use buttercream, you could use any light color. Uh, and I top coated both sides of it. So now I'm just going to cut my tissue paper. So you guys, this wasn't the project I had planned on doing today. I had planned on doing a really cool project that I wanted to do for a couple of years. And I got up early this morning and went to um, Home Depot to buy my wood. And I needed a big piece of wood that was, um, it was either four by four or four, six by six, I can't remember. And the first piece I found was too expensive. It was $33 for the piece of wood. And I was just like, do I really want to spend that much? No, I don't. And so then I got a phone call. And while I was on that phone call, I looked up and on the other side of the lumber department, was where the fencing material was, and they had the same exact thing, only this was fencing grade, and had been the wood had been treated, and it had, a, you know, like a deep brown color to it, and it was like, well, shoot, that's, that's even better. And it was only $16, because it wasn't the same grade of wood as the other one was. And so I had one of the guys get it down because it was up high. And then when he got it down, I told him that I needed it cut into three pieces. And he said, we can't cut this. And I said, well, I get wood cut here all the time. And he says, well, he says, I would cut it, but our machine won't cut it because it's too big and the machine, it won't go through the machine. And just to double check, he went and looked at the machine and measured it and said, no, it's not gonna fit in there. So then that was the end of that project. And he did say I could cut it with a circular saw. And I have a circular saw, but I don't know if I have the skills with my circular saw to do a piece that big by myself because that was a pretty big piece, you guys. So um, I talked to my son-in-law this afternoon and we're gonna go get it this weekend and cut it together. So that will be the project for next week. So then I had to scramble today 
to figure out what today was going to be. Because I usually start these projects at least the day before. Okay, so did you guys see how I did that? This clipboard, honestly, I like this clipboard better because what Royce did was she took a zip tie and she zipped, there's a, a little hook on the bottom here. She took a zip tie and connected it to this hook here and then opened this portion up and zip tied it. So when you were decoupaging, you could get underneath this really easy. This one won't let me do that. There's nothing to connect it to. So just, if you decide to do this, cause this would be really cute with the, some of the Christmas paper. Um, it's a good idea to put your recipes on when you're cooking, um, your to-do list. My to-do list is way too big for this. Okay, so I'm going to start decoupaging, and I know you guys are like experts at decoupage by now because I do a lot of it because I love it. But this is a little bit different because this is collage, and collage for me was a learning curve. And it's turning out to be one of my most favorite things to do. So I'm using satin top coat. That's what I like to use to decoupage. And I'm just using my usual Dixie Belle brush. This is a uh, uh, small flat. And I'm gonna pull back this section because this is where I call my anchor section. And I'm just gonna put on a small section of it just to get this laid down correctly. And I'm using this really cool felt applicator. It really helps you get things smoothed out. And I still have my Saran Wrap handy, and I can do that also. And the Saran Wrap, um, just keeps the texture from your fingers from tearing your paper when you're applying it. And then I'm going to pull back. Oh, a bunch of you have popped on here. Hi, Michelle. Hi, Robin. Yeah, Robin, you always want to put down a, um, a base coat. And the reason for that it, and it needs to be a light color. And the reason for that is, is that your decoupage tissue is very colorful. Um, but if, if you put it down on like a wood background, then that color isn't going to be as vibrant. It's not gonna pop as much as it does if you put a, just a base coat of a light color down. So I just added another row of medium and using my applicator tool and these are for sale on my website just smooth it out and just keep repeating that process and when i put down medium i don't put it right up along that edge I go across and get a strip of it on here. And then I work my way up to that edge. That way you don't end up with a big glob of medium underneath there. You need medium under there, but you don't want a big glob.
If I didn't do anything else to this, this would be pretty already. You've just taken a clipboard to the next level. So let's see. Thanks, Michelle. Welcome, Robin. Uh, Robin, I'm going to do, um, oh, I'm glad you just got a clipboard. That's awesome. Hi, Micheline. So happy to see you. I've missed you. Mickey. Okay, well, you guys all popped on and I didn't even know it. I have you up on my laptop because my uh, iPad is so full, I don't have any space left on it. And I tried to clear stuff off of it the other day and I still don't have, I'm still getting a message that it's full. I think I'm gonna have to take it to Apple and have one of the geniuses clear it off because all I use it for is, um, watching back my lives, so it's not like I play games on it or do anything else on it. The problem is, is that Apple, you know, just keeps loading all of these huge updates and that takes up all your space. You don't have room for anything else on there. And they do it on purpose so that you have to go buy another iPad and frankly, Another iPad is not in my budget, so. And I'm just gonna take this and just give it a light little rub. And you guys, when you buy uh, decoupage tissue from me, I always include a copy of iron-on instructions with the decoupage tissue. So if you've never seen me demonstrate the iron-on method, um, and I do it from time to time, it's, it's really good to, when you're lining the drawers of a dresser or a nightstand with decoupage paper. That's a really good way to make sure that your decoupage paper is adhered and um, really smooth. Getting close. I was starting to say something and I distracted myself. I don't remember what it was I was starting to say. And like I showed you how Royce had done the clip at the top, that was really nice because very smart. She, she's a smart lady um, because you can see that now it's a little bit tricky. So I'm just gonna take my scissors Um, Michelle, I'm using, I like to decoupage with a uh, Dixie Belle satin top coat. Um, I tell people all the time, they can use whatever they want to use. I don't recommend that people use Mod Podge. I know that's what everybody thinks of when they decoupage, but Mod Podge is not archival. And over time, it will crack and yellow. So I like to, to recommend that people use, um, you know, if you're using Wise Owl, because I am a retailer for Wise Owl, um, I recommend that you use either the varnish or the one hour enamel for decoupage is a really good choice. If you're using Dixie Belle, 
um, I recommend that you use any of the top coats. The satin top coat is what I use the most. Um, but you can use the flat, you can use the glossy, you can use the gator hide. And if it's an item that's going to come in contact with moisture, I really recommend you use the gator hide. Uh, because that's the only top coat that's um, water resistant. I believe the Wise Owl varnish is water resistant also. Michelle, can you confirm that? Because I know you're a Wise Owl retailer. I know one of them is, but I can't remember off the top of my head which one. Okay, and then I'm just gonna take my X-Acto knife and do the best I can going underneath here. I'm kind of scoring it with my fingernail. And I don't know if this X-Acto knife is very sharp. I think it's kind, kind of dull. And I never throw a scrap of decoupage tissue away, ever. I have a big bin over here and I pull stuff out because this is gonna be a perfect piece for something else. And same with this. So it will all go into my scrap bin. So I'm gonna let this sit and dry for a second, but I wanna talk to you guys about something. Um, I did some experimenting this week and I've wanted to do this for a while. So you guys might recognize that this design is one of my Deborah Booker decoupage tissue designs. And um, I've reduced it down to eight by 11. And I, I ran it on, through my inkjet printer and I taped it down to um, a piece of just regular paper. So this was the regular paper. And I used a glue stick and I taped it down, not taped, I glued it down like this and then ran it through my printer. And this is the print that I got and I did it on tissue paper. Um, I wasn't happy with the result with the glue stick because it did too good a job of gluing it. So then I ran it through, the first time I ran it through, this was a piece of paper that already had printing on it and I ran it through on the wrong side. Um, but you could, if you didn't wanna do this on tissue paper, you could just use your regular printer paper. It works just fine. And so, um, so then I took it and taped it to a piece of paper with painter's tape, because painter's tape, um, you can defuzz it a little bit and it doesn't stick and what doesn't tear up the paper. So never mind that there's some ink blotches over here. I don't know why my printer did that, but anyway, um, just pretend that that's not there. But anyway, you get this really pretty design just by printing it. And just ignore this stuff in there. But it came out really nice. And I think this is a really pretty piece design. And so um, you could put this on all kinds of your projects. People comment all the time that especially if they aren't, if they're crafters and they're not furniture um, painters, that sometimes the tissues are just too big for them because they're all, everything that I design and sell is um, 20 by 30. Um, 
So this is one way you can get a design that's in a smaller size. And I would like to offer it to you guys because you are such great um, followers. And so if you would do two things for me, if you would share today's video and then text me, don't, uh, don't instant message me um, on Facebook. If you would just send me a text, and the number to text me is 623-760-6867, and tell me your name and your email address. I will send you the file for this um, to download on your own computer, and then you can do this as many times as you want, and just have fun with it. Um, I. I would like to do that as a thank you for you guys following along with me. Some of you have been following along for a long time. So I wanted to mention that. So you just need to share the today's live and then text me to 623-760-6867. Um, and I will send that file to you right away. And I will be doing, let me bring the camera up. I will be doing a video that shows the whole process. Um, I probably just won't get it done till probably this weekend. And then I'll pop it up on the Facebook page. But it's really easy to do and it was really fun to do. So I just thought I would share that with you guys. Okay, so... I think we'll continue to work on this side. And I pulled out my Harlequin um, stencil and thought that that would be kind of fun to put a, a few little squares on it. And where did, okay, so here's my tree. So I definitely wanna put my tree on here. I had fun creating this tree. Okay, so I'm gonna pull that up and just, that'll hold it in place there. Let me see if anybody has any questions. Thank you, Michelle. Okay, I was right, it is the varnish and three coats, yeah. And that's what I tell people, either using the varnish or using the gator hide. If you want something to be water resistant, I always say three coats. Okay, so I'm just gonna take a piece of painter's tape here. And I'm defuzzing it, and that just means I'm putting it on my clothes here, on my sleeve, so that when I go to pull this off of my decoupage tissue, there's less chance of it pulling up. And I'm not burnishing it down because um, this paper feels dry to the touch, but I know that it's not, and I just wanna be careful. I'm gonna put one more piece up here. Okay, so I'm going to use, I've only used these once, and I thought they were really awesome and they are I forget what they're called I'm going to put them up on my website I have a section on my website of my favorite things and I was going to put a link up there I just haven't had time to get it done um, I've seen other crafters use these and we use these up at Royce's uh, at the um, in fact, this is probably the one I used up there 
at the uh, retreat and I really thought they were cool. And I'm going to use some of Dixie Belle's silk paint and the color is Anchor. And I, I have this jar open and I love Dixie Belle's silk paint. It's really, um, this anchor is really black. It's really like the abyss. And so I'm just giving it a stir. And I, I try to tell people to stir and not shake. And the reason for that is, is there's a, there's a lip down here in the bottom of your jar. And when you stir with a popsicle stick, you get all of those ingredients that have settled to the bottom, um, re-immersed in your paint. But another really, really good reason is your lid stays clean. It doesn't get all gunked up. And then it's easy to get your jar lids off without having to knock down the house. So um, I'm going to take a little bit of this and put it on my paint palette over here. That's probably enough. So I'm just gonna dip this into my little paint palette. And if this was a um, adhesive stencil, I would just rub all around with it. But since it's not, I'm going to just pounce straight up and down. and we'll see how this turns out. I'm just making this up as I go, you guys. Makeup blender, Mary, that's right. That's what they're called. Thanks, Michelle. It's funny that it's called a makeup blender. Um, I guess I'm just so old school that um, it would never occur to me to use anything like this to blend my makeup. I'd have to watch one of those videos to see how to even go about that process. I use Merle Norman foundation and I've used it since my mother allowed me to start wearing makeup. I've never, I've tried other products and I don't like them. So I always go back to the same thing. It's Merle Norman and that's what my mom used and that's, I would borrow her makeup And that's what I've used all of these years. I still do. Maybe I need to be using one of these blenders. So talk amongst yourselves, you guys. Now, I do want to say, which most of you already know this, I'm sure, but I do want to say I'm bouncing up and down and not rubbing this way for two reasons. First of all, the branches in here, if I went rubbing back and forth like that, they would move because they're not taped down. So that's one super good reason not to be rubbing back and forth on it. Um, the other is 
I don't want to get paint underneath. And by going, just pouncing up and down on it, that will help. Um, not to get too much paint so that there isn't any bleed through underneath it. kind of excited to see what this looks like when I get it done, when I can lift it up. Since I've never used it. You know, it's always fun to go on a live on Facebook doing something, you ha using something you've never used before. <laughs> I don't know if that's brave or just dumb. So I don't know if you guys know, some of you might, but I got a new puppy about maybe three weeks ago. It might be a little longer now. I should have written down the date. I can go back and look at my post and then I'll know. Um, anyway, he is such a sweet dog. He is a Karen Terrier. They said a Karen Terrier Chihuahua mix, but honestly, I can't see any Chihuahua in him. And I've looked at the pure breed, the pictures of the pure breed, Karen Terriers, and he looks exactly like them, so I'm not sure. Um, but a Karen Terrier is a, a breed from Scotland. They were little hunting dogs. And he is so sweet, and I am enjoying him so much. And he's really super smart, and I have a doggy door, but he wakes me up at night, which um, I'm glad he does when he has to go potty. So we get up like twice a night, like usually about 12.30. And then about sometimes another time. And then he's awake for the day at 5.30 every morning. So um, he has completely changed my schedule. And I'm tired. I am tired. By the time evening comes, I'm like looking at the clock. And on Sunday, I did all my yard work and I had a lot to get done. And I was out there in the heat for about um, four hours. And I came in, took my shower, ate something, and got in bed at 6.30 at night. But I started this conversation to tell you what a good boy he is, and he has learned how to use the doggy door, but he wants me still to go out with him, so I still have to get up and go out with him, but at least he's learned how to use the doggy door. And um, he was not potty trained when I got him. It's, it's just amazing to me what human beings can do because I don't know what his situation was um, but whatever the situation was he's about two years old and he'd never been potty trained and so he had quite a few accidents here in my house which I was not happy about and I didn't even know there was such a thing but you can get doggy diapers and so I had a diaper on him and I was taking him outside once an hour to go. And he, I have to say he is completely trained now and hasn't had any accidents and doesn't have to wear his diaper anymore. 
I'm just gonna go over a few light places in here and then pull this up and see what it looks like. But how could you have a dog for two years in an apartment and not have them potty trained? So I, I don't even know how that's possible. So I'm assuming maybe they use those potty pads for two years. But then the saddest part of it is, is that when they, and I'm not judging because I don't know what the circumstances or the situation was, so I'm not judging, but they moved from the apartment and I don't know if this was a young couple or an elderly couple. I don't have any of that information, but they moved and they had two dogs. They had him and another dog and they went off and left the dogs. They moved out and left the dogs behind. And then somebody in the apartment complex heard the dogs crying, crying and barking and called the rescue. And then he was with a rescue family for a couple of weeks before I got him. Cause they take them to the vet and they make sure that they have the, they're up to date on their shots and all of that. Okay, so you guys ready for this? I'm excited. But all of that story to tell you what a good boy he is and I'm so happy he's mine and he's very smart. And he knows how to use the doggy door and, and he's not having accidents and he doesn't have to wear his diaper anymore. Okay, so I'm just gonna lift straight up. Oh, I forgot that I Put this under the lip there. Oh my goodness, I love that. What do you guys think? I really love that. I'm glad I changed my paper. Let's see, I'm trying to get a good view. That's not it. Hi, nature. Thanks. Thank you, Micheline. I don't know, Micheline, you could be right. I've just thought about it um, so much because I, I don't know, you know, they could have been an elderly couple and, um, and maybe somebody got sick and went to the hospital. I mean, I don't know. All I can do is just make things up in my head. But he's such a sweet little dog, and I'm so happy that I got him. And um, love this, you guys. Love, love, love. So um, I also, like I said, brought out my... Harlequin stencil. And it may be, it may be, oh, maybe some up here because that's kind of empty up there. So just like a hint of Harlequin, not like I think I'll do that much. And I have probably just enough paint. And I'm not gonna like do it solid like I did on the tree. Uh, 
That's cool. I like that. What do you guys think of that? I might put some down here. This Harlequin stencil is up on my website too, if you guys. I have different Harlequins. I know a lot of people love um, the McKenzie Child check. But I've always been a Harlequin girl. I have a really pretty table I painted that's all hand painted. It wasn't stenciled. I measured and hand painted every little square on it. Oh, I love, love, love. Okay, so I'm gonna put my little makeup, whatever it is, away. And I think it, I think it needs something. I don't know, you guys, if it needs like, I could do one of these butterflies on here. Or let me see what else I have over here in my stash box. I think it needs a pop of color. Here's one of those butterflies. Ooh, you guys. What do you think if I put this, cut this owl out with water and put the owl on. What do you guys think of that idea? Thank you, Mary. Mickey, I love everything with Harlequin too. Mary, you're saying yes to the owl? Okay, so I'll do the owl. So I'm just gonna take um, an artist brush. Oh, there's a better one. I like to take a brush that's got a tip on it, like about this. Can't tell if I have it in the camera or not. There. And the reason why I like that is because um, it holds water. And so I'm just gonna go, not real close, I'm just gonna go around the outline of this owl. I love owls. So I'm just dipping my brush into a dish of clean, fresh water and just outlining. So I almost have the um, nesting tables done. Two are done. And the third one, the smallest one, is almost done. I just had kind of a crazy week. My granddaughter had 
her very first piano recital. And then my daughter has um, a foreign exchange student named Madeline um, living with them. And it was her birthday this week. So after the recital, then we all went for a Brazilian beef dinner, which I've never done one of those before. Boy, was that fun. And um, it was just kind of a crazy week. Okay, so this is a straight edge here, and I don't want a straight edge. I, it's really, really rare. So I just wet it and just pull, pull that edge away. I'm gonna pull a little bit more. I don't want to pull any of my owl off, but I don't want it to look like it's a straight edge. Okay. And then this will go in my box of stash because I will use it on something. There's a gal named Cynthia and she's at, um, I'm gonna pull a little more off the top up here. She is at Ground Floor Artist where my studio is. And I've taken several classes from her on collage and I've learned so much and I really, really, really enjoy doing collage. Okay, I don't want to cover this up down here. I'm thinking he looks good down, nested down here in this area. What do you guys think? Okay, are you guys gonna tell me what you think? I'm just gonna go for it. So I'm gonna hold him down where I want him so he doesn't shift around and then I'm just going to put down some satin top coat and it doesn't matter that I'm going back over this. So I put some underneath and now I'm just blending him in. And the fun thing is, is I have another back side of this to decide what to do with it. And it can be along the same um, lines as this one, or it can be something completely different. I'm going to get my saran wrap here. And just give this a little smooth. I could play and do this kind of stuff all night long.
And you guys, just as a little tip, if when you're using this, if you get any of your satin top coat or your decoupage medium on this felt part, be sure you get it washed right away because if it dries on there, um, it's done. And I always say this, but I'll say it again in case you're new. Um, tissue paper, any paper, has elasticity. And it will um, stretch. But as it dries, it will shrink back down to its original size. So I'm just gonna give that a quick little dry. And I'm thinking I might put a little bit up, just a little hint of Harlequin over here. I put my brush in the water, so I'll just get another one. And I don't want to cover up that root. So I'm going to do it that way. And this is the point that things just become fun. Because there is no rule. And my friend Cynthia that I take the collage classes from, she always tells me to do something unexpected. I don't have much paint left on here. need a skosh more. Yep, that's cool. Okay, so I have, um, I know we're getting close on time, but I just want to do one more thing before I let you guys go. And I'm not done with this by any means. Um, I'm going to look through my stash and see what else I might want to add to it. But I'm going to take a little bit of Dixie Belle Brown Wax. And I love using the French tip brush with it. I don't know if I'm in camera or not. There we go. Um, and I'm just gonna dip it into, just, just get the edges of it. And I'm gonna go around the edge of my board. And I like this French tip because it gives me a lot of control. I need to get my little sanding block and take that edge off up there. Set it back down here. And just like on furniture, I like to just blend it in, and another reason why I like this brush is it lets me do that. I just turn it on its side. And 
and it just adds another dimension to everything. This is wet. I'm gonna give it a little heat. Oh, hi, Cynthia. I didn't even know you were there. Cynthia is um, my, let's see, what's a good word? Mentor at um, Ground Floor Artist. I've learned so much. So, Cynthia, I was sitting here trying to remember. You told me two things, and one was always do something unexpected but what was the uh, there was another thing and right now i can't remember what you told me so since you're here share it she's she does really cool cool work and cynthia i found some of those postcards so i'm going to uh, i've been thinking about those postcards a lot and doing small collages with the jelly plate you guys one of these days i'm going to demo the jelly plate because that's super super fun too um but i was thinking about making my own christmas cards i don't i haven't sent out christmas cards in years so people will just faint if they get a christmas card from me um and it would be a very short small list of people that i would send a handmade card to anyway but she was making some postcards when I was in there the other day and I thought oh that's really cool oh grouping things together yeah can you post where you do your classes please um I sure will. I think, I don't know if I posted it at the top of this video. I usually do, but I was uh, running out of time today, so I don't know if I did or not, but I will definitely post where my classes are. I am so fortunate to be um, at Ground Floor Artists because there's 38 working artists there. And so they're from all kinds of different backgrounds and mediums. And so you just get an opportunity to do and see and learn so much. And I tell people all the time, and it's the truth, it just puts a smile on my face when I walk through the door. So that really adds a lot of depth and dimension. Um, so... I'm going to stop at this point. It needs to have another coat of the top coat on the whole piece, but I'm gonna let this dry, especially since I just put wax on it. And I wanna just study it and look at it for a while because I, I feel like it still needs more, but I don't know yet. And I'm gonna dig through my box and see what, what speaks to me. And then I'll post a finished picture um, online tomorrow. So let me just come up here for a minute. And I just want to remind you guys one more time. Hang on. About if you would like to receive the free download for these, this tissue design. And I'll send it out to you sometime this week. And then you can print it off and you can use it on. I have some door hangers that I was going to do door hangers with this. I could probably get three door hangers out of this. Um, and you can print it off on tissue paper or you can print it off. Or if you don't have a good color printer at home, just take it to... Um, Office Max or wherever, just take the file to them and ask them to print it off on whatever medium you want it on. So they'll do that for you too. 
and then you just decoupage with it just like we've been doing. So if you would like to get this design in your email this week, then just text me and the number you need to text is 623-760-6867. Um, just text me your name and your email, uh, your name and your email address. And I'll get that file out. And then by the end of this week, probably over the weekend, I'll get a video demonstrating the whole process. It's super, super easy. Um, and I think I'll do these from time to time um, because sometimes you might want one of these tissues, but you don't want a 20 by 30. And sometimes on the tissues, I'll put two on one tissue. So that does help with the size. But anyway, I was just, I wanted to do something to let you guys know how much I appreciate you guys. And, um, it is getting into fall and Thanksgiving, and I'm thankful for all of you. So there you go. Let me see what questions. Yes, the text number is 623-760-6867. And be sure and tell me your name, and I need your email address so I can just send you the file. There you go. So does anybody have any questions? Let me just see if I missed anything. Micheline, I love birds too. I think we've shared that before and I will be going through my stash to see if I have any birds that I think I can add to that piece. So um, I didn't even know where I set it. I set it clear over there. And I mentioned when we started, but um, this stencil, this tree stencil is up on my website. It's under stencils. And um, if you would like one of those, you could place an order for it. I think, you know, at first I thought it was just kind of like a spooky Halloween-ish. But then when I started putting it on, I thought, well, I could see that being... Um, a tree that could be like in a wintry snow scene and not be spooky. I can also see taking tissue paper that's got green on it and tearing off little leaves and decoupaging leaves on it. And not on this one, because I want the bare look, but I'm just saying that stencil is really versatile with things that you could do with it, because that would be really fun to tear off the leaves and put all the little individual leaves on branches. So I'll have to think about that. So you guys, thanks so much. Thanks for joining me every Tuesday at 4 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. And my website is www.debrabookerdesigns.com. You guys have a great evening and I'll see you soon. Bye.